everybody, this is Margaret. Welcome to my channel. You're on BookTube and I'm here with another tag. Surprise, surprise. Happy Tag Tuesday. I will be intersecting with your comments in cyberspace, I'm sure. So, thanks for watching and uh, I'm going to go through the Round the World in 8T prompts today, which is a Book Time with Elvis tag and I was tagged by Roz at Scally Dandling about the books. So thank you Roz for this. Um, there's several good teas that I like and um, maybe some that I was at a loss for. So let's see what I, what I said. Um, the first one is for theater. Tea is for theater. Do you read plays? What's one of your favorites? And I don't read many plays anymore. Um, I have a few that I have not read, especially in the classic department and in the French department, but I get very few opportunities to um, highlight them or like make me read them. So readathons um, or specific prompts are a good plan for these. Uh, the favorites I have are all from long ago because the more you speak with other people about them, the more that's illuminated in the text, I think. So I loved reading Arcadia in high school and True West and Hamlet. So Arcadia is by Tom Stoppard, modern classic um, I also got to see it at PCPA in Santa Maria, California, an amazing production. Um, True West, I did not see, but I saw video clips during English class, and John Malkovich was in that, and that's all I remember, and um, just sort of like a d descending into madness type of deal. And then Hamlet, you know, foundational play, I, I did it for the Shakespeare, Shakespeare, um, day last month or two ago and did a soliloquy and yeah I just love that play because I was in it it was fun okay question two T is for travel favorite travel writer or book and I've mentioned her a couple times recently and the name's just going to keep coming back up until someone tells me that I got them to read a book of hers Alice Steinbach and she wrote without reservations so she has two travel books that she wrote after she retired from being a journalist and I just find them brilliant. I would also say Robert McFarlane as a travel slash nonfiction writer because he talks about science topics as well as geographical locations and history. So sort of a mixed bag. Um, and then I also would throw in there Malena de Blasi who wrote A Thousand Days in Venice, which is just beautiful. I reread it recently because I was going to unhaul it and then I thought, no, this is too... This is too beautiful. I tried to read another of her books and didn't like it as much. So obviously it's just that one has the magic. And then Frances Mays, who Roz also mentioned, um, we talked about um, Under the Tuscan Sun in the comments and uh, I put off reading the book because I had seen the trailer and the Diane Lane sort of portrayal sort of put me off it. But then I finally read it and it was gorgeous. The book itself is just gorgeous. So recommend. All right, number three, T is for time. What is the book that took you the longest time to read and why? Ooh, uh, <laughs> so right now I've been reading 12 Wild Swans for two years and um, why? Because of stubbornness. I started it and I can't seem to pick it back up because of like the emotional afterburn, aftertaste, after something chemtrail that I that made me put it down originally so um it's still sitting there on my nightstand and I need to finish it question number four T is for traditional what's your favorite fairy tale nursery rhyme etc that is unsuitable for kids today and there's a lot of judgment involved in this prompt um but I I thought about this one a lot I couldn't come up with much um I do remember watching a cartoon version of the Seven Swan Brothers, which is related to Twelve Wild Swans, and it's like the same kind of fairy tale. It's just it's one sister and six or seven brothers who get turned into swans, and she has to knit them sweaters made of nettles and not talk for a certain period of time. Anyway, that one. And um, I think we had recorded it off the TV, and I watched it over and over again, and so I remember that one fondly. I'm not sure why. There's no music to it. It's not like it's the last unicorn or anything. Question five is tea for tasty. 
favorite books about food? Ooh, there's so many. And yeah, I've winnowed it down because I thought I would do something with um, food in terms of food writing or uh, pop-up restaurant supper club kind of thing, and that didn't happen. So I eventually had like just let go of some of the books that I was I had collected, um, but I still have a substantial few. I really like Lori Colwyn's writing. Um, she had an essay that I think was the titular essay of a book called Alone in, in the Kitchen with an Eggplant. And how can you not win with a title like that? So she's pretty brilliant. Um, what We Eat When We're Alone. And that is... Um, I didn't get out books for this, so I'll flash up the author for that one. Um, and that's just a fun one. It's got little illustrations. It's got little anecdotes. And then it sort of reprises everything at the end of each section with um, the recipes. And so it's just really like personal fun tales peeking into other people's lives because food can be so intimate and personal. And um, it's allowing people to share that in the mama's way. <laughs> so that, that's another favorite food one. Question six is T for terrible, a nasty but memorable character. I'm going to say Lord of the Flies, any of the characters, because I just hated that book from high school and didn't want to touch it ever again. Um, but then what also came to mind was uh, the father in the Poisonwood Bible. No. And um, one of the daughters, the daughter that ends up at the, the hotel manager, um, she goes on a journey, but I, I don't like even where she ends up. So... Maybe that makes me unsympathetic, but I think she's still terrible. So there you go. Question seven, T is for truth. When the truth is stranger than fiction. Sorry about that. Apologies for the change in lighting. My light just went out, so it's going to be a little darker here. It's fine. I'm almost done with this tag, so we're going we're gonna to brazen it out. Truth is Stranger Than Fiction, question seven. I had one on here that I hadn't read, and I don't remember what reference I was making. So I'm going to switch it out for another one that I haven't read, which is The Soap Man, Lewis Harris and Lord Leverhulme by Roger Hutchinson. This is a book I got on travel to Scotland because it's about the Isle of Lewis. Let me just read you the um, description on the back, and you'll understand why The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction with this one. Or maybe not, because we're all students of history here. In 1918, as the First World War was drawing to a close, the eminent liberal industrialist Lord Leverhulme, think Lever 2000 soap, bought lock, stock, and barrel the Hebridean island of Lewis. His intention was to revolutionize the lives and environment of its 30,000 people and those of neighboring Harris, which he shortly added to his estate. Think of Harris Tweed. For the next five years, a state of conflict reigned in the Hebrides as island servicemen returned from the war to discover a new landlord whose aim was to destroy their identity as independent crofter fishermen and turn them into tenured wage slaves. This is the story of their fight, a battle which led ultimately to the defeat of one of the most powerful men of the time. So I got this a couple years ago and uh, want to dive into it when I want a story of victory for the common person, and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> but it's a little bit like um, the Keening battle, but that didn't have, oh, spoiler alert, that doesn't have a good um, ending with the landlord. Yeah, I'm just fascinated to read this, also because it might be, I don't know, useful for future endeavors, who knows? Okay, so that's seven. And then question eight is tag with the bonus of give yourself an eighth prompt with the T theme for your taggies. So my taggies are going to be What's Booking, Paula Guerrero, Words of Clover, and Olivia's Catastrophe. So I hope none of you have done this. And your eighth prompt is going to be So Roz's tag was T for turnip. So my question number eight has to be about an insult that is particular to my country or culture or something. And I, I, hers is much better. And um, 
as you can probably deduce, I like the British history of insults much better than American. So I'm just going to go with the Johnny Tremaine one, which is Pig of a Louse, which I've mentioned before, <laughs> which I still think is so great. The other, the other like insulting word that I like on top of my head is codswallop because it has to do with cod and I just read a book about cod. But um, yeah, so those are my insult themed things. My tag question for my taggies is going to be Tuvalu, a place to read about before it is erased by the climate crisis. So Tuvalu is one of these um, low-lying, not Ayatollah, I, I told, there's a word that has that syllable in it that just means uh, <laughs> a low-lying island that is barely above sea level. Anyway, Tuvalu is one of these islands. It's famous for tourism, but it's also disappearing by sea level rise and um, storm surge and erosion. So tell me a book that um, is going to uh, enlighten you about a place to visit that might disappear because of the climate crisis. So we're talking Louisiana, we're talking um, island states, we're talking um, mangrove forests in Thailand, we're talking the reefs around Australia, like any of these places that you hear about that are endangered by climate change and a book that would help you learn about them or that is set there. So just spreading awareness and being a harbinger of happiness. All right, well, that was too many H's for a T prompt, and um, I'll just end it there. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Roz, for tagging me. I will put the information down below for those who need the original or want to watch Roz's. And um, I hope you enjoyed this bit of silliness, and I hope to see your video soon. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later.